Wednesday afternoon previously recorded. I am your host, Abe Lincoln, the 16th president. On this show, we will be interviewing the fascinating young lady that started the Great War, Harriet Beecher Stowe, and her expert panel of the book, Uncle Tom's Cabin. And I have a couple questions for you guys. So what is this book truly about? Like, can you give us a quick overview? Yes, I can. Here's, I'm going to tell you the overview of the story. The slave in question are Uncle Tom, a middle-aged man with a wife and children on the farm, and Harry, the young son of Mrs. Shelby's maid, Eliza. However, Eliza overhears the conversation between Harry and his wife. After warning Uncle Tom and his wife, and Chloe, he takes Harry and flees to the north, hope to find freedom with her husband, George, in Canada. Meanwhile, Uncle Tom sadly leaves his family. Harry takes him to the boat on the Mississippi to be transported to a slave market. On the boat, Tom meets an angelic little white girl named Eva, who quickly is friends with him. Tom travels with St. Clair's to their hometown in New Orleans, where he grows increasingly invaluable to the St. Clair's household and increasingly close to Eva, with whom he shares a devout Christianity. After Tom has lived with the St. Clair's for two years, Eva grows very ill and dies. St. Clair's decide to sell Tom free. However, before he can act on his decision, St. Clair's stabbed to death while traveling to settle a brawl. St. Clair's cruel wife Marie sells Tom to a vicious plantation owner named Simon Ligri. Ligri resolves to crush his faith in God. When Tom is near death, he forgives Ligri. George Shelby arrives with money in hand to buy Tom's freedom, but he is too late. George Shelby returns to the Kentucky farm where, after his father's death, he sets all the slaves free in honor of Tom's memory. He urges them to think on Tom's sacrifice every time they look at his cabin and to lead a pious Christian life just as Tom did. That's fantastic. Your description sounds a lot better than what I read on Sparknotes. So much more detailed. You mean you didn't actually read the novel? I'm shocked, Abe. Well, at least I'm being honest. We need to get out. We need to get on to the next question. I'd like to know how, more about the novel and this stuff. Could you tell me how, when, and where, and why the book was written? I could. All right, Abe, I will. Um, I will tell you, but only if you promise to read at least a chapter 52. Um, the book was written um, during the Compromise of 1850, when Congress tried to mollify the South by hardening up the Fugitive Slave Act. This infuriated the abolitionists, including me, and I decided to write my book on this theme. It was a way to show that I was against slavery and that I wanted to find a way to stop it. Uncle Tom's Cabin was published on March 20, 1852, just before the Civil War. It was written in my hometown in Connecticut, and from there it made its way throughout the United States. I wrote it to express slavery from the point of view of the enslaved, and wanted to settle the emotions that existed in the reader's mind during that time by creating a, a strong sense of guilt and injustice over the matter of slavery, and how it destroys lives and families. Uh, in my depiction of these African American slave archetypes, I show the detrimental effects of slavery. Uncle Tom, the main character, is an archetype of a subservient, faithful slave who is eventually slain inhumanely by an angered, overzealous owner. All the people who died in the environment of slavery were essentially good people, and dying in this way stresses the point that people who embody an angelic spirit become dehumanized by systematic racial hatred thus proving that slavery is detrimental not only to African American society, but white as well. Breaking news. Over in the Shelby's household, a slave girl named Eliza ran off with her son, Harry, all the way to Canada where she'll be reunited with her husband, George. Now George's new slave owner has set out a hunt to hunt him down, dead or alive. He will find him. A warning has been sent to all the slave owners that if you mate with your slaves, your children will look like this in their adult age. So please, do not sleep with your slaves. 
This is Louise reporting live from Wednesday, previously recorded live. Thank you. Now let's move on to how the public received the novel in the 1850s when it was first published. What did the North and the South think of the novel? The most liberal ab abolitionist felt that the book was not strong enough in its call to immediately end slavery, dislike the support of the colonization movement, and suggest that my main character Tom was not forceful enough. More moderate anti-slavery advocates and reformers praised the book for putting a human face on those held in slavery, emphasizing the impact slavery had on families and helping the pro public understand and emphasize with the plot of enslaved, enslaved mothers. Pro-slavery forces claim that slavery was sectioned in the Bible, that Tom was too noble and accused though for of fabricating unrealistic, one-sided images of Southern slavery. Fascinating. As my final question, I'd be interested to hear you talk about Uncle Tom's Cabin's influence on society. What changes did the novel precipitate? Well, I, I don't like to boast about my own work, but I must be truthful. In the North, my novel persuaded many to adopt an anti-slavery stance and revolt against the harsh and unjust fugitive slave law. Most other abolitionists praised my book as well for its heart-wrenching portrayal of the evils of slavery, although others claimed it was suffused with too much emotion and feeling and bordered on propaganda. My novel, Propaganda. <sighs> But if that was what it was going to take to defeat slavery, then I would have written 100 novels just like it. Justice! Justice must be served! Well, I knew that I had to do something to address all my critics, so I wrote a new book entitled The Key to Uncle Tom's Cabin, which goes into detail about the real-life people and stories that provide the basis for Uncle Tom's Cabin. My novel was also popular in England when it was first published, and it was an inspiration of sorts for Upton Sinclair's The Jungle and Rachel Carson's Silent Spring, which were political protest novels published in the 20th century. Wow, I can see why your book was first widely read political novel, Miss Stowe. It shows how slavery was wrong and just because of the impact upon white morality. It, but because of the removal of African American humanity and dignity, the book also demonstrates how the Bible was often used in heinous ways to support slavery, as well as the racism was not confined only to the South, but was prevalent in the North as well. Now let's move on to our dramatic entertainment on Wednesday previously recorded. We'll be shown an interpretation of a scene in which Elijah escapes from Shelby's plantation with her young son to prevent him from being sold into slavery. The scene is so powerful because of the depiction of the mother's desperation to save her child from a life doomed of bondage. Let's watch. Oh, Mrs. Dear Mrs. Don't think me ungrateful. Don't think hard of me. Anyways, I hear all in you, Master said, and I, I'm going to try and save my boy. You will not blame me. Go bless and reward all you get kindness. Now I really must go, for if I tarry, I will never save him. Wake up. No, Ma, I want to stay here. We, no, dear, we have to flee from here, or a wicked man will come and take you away from your mama. We're running away so the ugly man won't catch you. Eliza, she was just here last night. What's this? She's escaped, <gasps> and Harry's gone too. What? Poor, poor Eliza. Poor Eliza. I ain't never lost a slave before, and I ain't gonna start now. Oh, I'm gonna get her. Get the guns. Get the dogs. Oh, I'm gonna get her. You sold that boy to me, and he is my rightfully owned property. I'm gonna get him. 
trust you, Eliza. I'd rather die than let them take my Harry away from me. Hurry, darling. We're heading on to Ohio and then on to Canada. Please, Lord, let us make it. Please let me see my husband again. Please don't let them take my child away from me. Don't worry, Ma. Just trust God. I will, Harry. I will. Wow, what a story. Well, that was today's edition of Wednesday's Previously Recorded. Thanks for watching, and make sure you check out Uncle Tom's Cabin on Sparknotes. Oh wait, I mean the local bookstore.